Is that where we're sitting? No. Oh, come on. Okay. Cool. What are you looking for? Gurk. Okay, this time I'm serious. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You guys know my best buddy. He has no time to pay attention to us today. But that's okay, right? We don't need that, do we? I think I do. I am as codependent as he is. Let's just be honest. It's a very unhealthy relationship we have going, but it is what it is. It is May 2021. May 2021. Masks will be coming off soon. Yay! Um, vaccinations are happening. This is a channel where I document my fiber journey. So sometimes that means I show finished projects. And here we are. I have a few extra craft projects as well right now. I've been really crafty. I do feel like there's not enough hours in the day as I'm sure many of you feel. I mean, there's just not enough hours in the day to do all the crafty stuff we wanna do, right? I have a pile on my desk. I've been through Instagram. I've been through Ravelry to check all my finished projects and I'm pretty sure I have it all. I'm pretty sure I have it all. And how are you? How is your part of the universe? And that could mean your home, your actual house. How is your region of the world? Because we're not all in the US and a lot of the rest of the world is having trouble getting enough vaccinations. In my corner of the world, we still have some restrictions. We're donating convalescent plasma because we have antibodies. John and I both had COVID. Um, like we got it i think it was the very end of the last few days of january and it went into february and they're still using plasma as a therapeutic to treat people who are really sick in the hospital and last we heard we were not allowed to get the vaccine if we wanted to donate plasma and people are being really mean if you haven't gotten the vaccine and i don't understand because besides having a reason like we do it's a personal choice and I don't understand like if people, uh, I don't understand the meanness. I don't understand it. Why are people so mean now? What is happening to this world? And is what is happening to this world something that's been said for the last 200, 300, 2000 years, every time you get to be in your late forties, I feel like maybe that's just the way things are. <laughs> we get to a certain age and we're just, sad to see people be ugly to each other and we're like what's happening to this world the same thing that's always been happening the windows are open so you can probably hear the birdies tweeting are you guys ready to go through some finished projects a few of these socks might be too small to go on the blockers if they are i'll go get my little plastic feet <laughs> i'm just gonna grab these in no particular order i think the very first thing that got done after the last um, project update was the Gotland blend that we got from Paradise. I don't remember when we got it. Maybe February? We got two four ounce bundles of Gotland and Silk and I think there was viscous in it too. Uh, I dyed it and I actually did a video where I split each of the four ounce bundles into two different bundles. So one of the bundles was gray and the other bundle was white. They called it black and white. It was really like charcoal. And I wanted to show what it looks like if you dye a white and a charcoal with the exact same dye. I mixed a big jug, I showed it. I'll link it, I guess. I thought I would show you guys how they did turn out. So I planned to put them in a yoke on a colorwork sweater and I had these singles that are already spun and I was like, perfect, that'll be perfect for the rest of the sweater. And then John was like, oh, I really like this. Do you think you can make me a sweater? So I don't know what the rest will be. They're just gonna have to wait, but they did turn out so awesome. Here, these are the two white ones. And again, I'll link the dyeing video if you wanna know what colors I used. And then here are the two charcoal ones. They are just so beautiful and they were really nice to spin. And then here, these are the charcoal and the white, 
both dyed with the exact same color dye. Isn't that awesome? I am so in love with how these colors are all together. I'm gonna quick show you all together. Well, these are gonna be such a pretty yoke on a sweater. So I'm really looking forward to knitting it. However, sweater knitting doesn't always happen in the summer for me. I guess I just don't like having a big hot sweater in my lap. So it might be a while, but that is the plan for these. Um, I think it's going to be the Heim sweater, which John got a Heim sweater that is knit with the yoke from, I think it was March of last year's box. It was all those different colors of Shetland. So that's what the plan is with these. And I loved spinning these. I would love to get some more of that Gotland. I just, right now I have enough fiber and you know how it is. You guys know me. You know how I am. But I loved it and I would love to spin it again. These were being knit during the last project update. These are socks for John. I don't even know where, oh here, here's the other one. I dyed this fiber ages ago, probably a whole year ago almost. I did some ice dyeing last summer. He really liked the colors and he said I'd love it if he would do some socks for me with those colors but less white. So I did a sock yarn and then I also did a batch of Stroll Roving from Knit Picks, which I will link below because it is so nice for socks. And this is how his hand spun socks turned out. They're actually really close to twins. I don't know how that happened because it wasn't really planned, but they're quite, quite close to the same. I had a ton of yarn. These were in my Instagram feed, so a lot of you have already seen them. They are cool. These are his favorite colors. So yeah, those are some socks for John. They turned out really nice. He's got big feet, like size 12, I think, so they take a long time, but I'm kind of in love with these. There's a lot of spinning here. I also finished these. These have not had ends woven in yet. Hang on, let me put one on a blocker. A bunch of these socks don't have ends woven in yet. I guess I just have to have like a end weaving party, just like pour a glass of wine and just weave ends for an hour and a half. I had friends over to dye some wool and yarn with me like a year and a half ago and I dyed this and I just pulled it out of my stash uh, I don't know, two months ago maybe, to just knit a pair of plain socks that I wouldn't have to think about so they're easy to take with me. So these are for me. Not that exciting, but they did turn out kind of pretty. So now I'm gonna go through some spinning and then we're gonna go through sock madness up to now. I was a little unsure if I was gonna wait until the very end, but I think I'm just gonna go because I probably won't make it much further anyways. I have a friend who gave me a bunch of Dorset Polypay roving that came from RH Lindsay and I did a true long draw and then a chain ply on these so they're plain. I thought I would dye them after, which I don't do a lot of. This yarn is super squishy and springy, so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. And I I wanted to try it out because I was considering maybe buying some. And um, I mean, I did really like it, but then I kind of thought better of adding more wool to my stash at this moment, so. Uh, it's, I mean, not that exciting with spin. Almost 500 yards. So I think I can really do something with this. I don't know, do you guys have any suggestions? This is the kind of yarn where if you knit, you can't really knit, well you can. I wouldn't normally knit a cowl or something like that because it's gonna stand up stiff. Or a shawl, it's not gonna have any drape. Um, that's not a complaint, it's just sort of an observation, so I want to make sure I use the characteristics of the yarn in the project to its best advantage. I think that makes sense. We've all kind of mismatched yarn with projects before. I think we all have. I don't want that to happen, obviously. So if you got any suggestions, I'm all ears. 
because I don't know what to do with these. But I like spinning it. Story of my life, right? A few months back, I'm not exactly sure when, we got, not that long ago, maybe March, we got a blend from Paradise in the box. It was seven or eight ounces of, okay, they called it Downy Downpour. It's mixed BFL and Tussa Silk. Okay. So I dyed it, I dyed it on this channel and then I posted a picture on Instagram while I was spinning it, or maybe two, and a lot of you were like, oh my god, I can't wait to see that. So, here it is. Okay, so it's got really bright light on it. It is quite a bit, I'm actually going to uh, try to adjust the color, but it is so nice. It spun up beautifully, and it dyed beautifully. And the colors are so deep and rich. I just love this stuff. I got, I didn't even need to look that up because it says right on my tag for once. Um, I got 670 yards and I would say it's maybe sport. It might be a tiny bit heavy on the sport end, but it is so good. You can tell better here. The colors are much more true, not up close. It is so wonderful and it's still nice and squishy because it was top and i did spin it um short forward draw it's still got a lot of squish to it but you know bfl and then the silk gives it some shine and it's just the best oh my gosh i have another paradise spin is this the last one no it is not the last one okay months ago we got a box with seven or eight ounces of polworth and I dyed it. I don't think I filmed the, this dyeing. I haven't been filming all of it, but I did show a picture. It's not as exciting as some. It was like all different shades of pink and then some like a little bit of orange in it. So I'm gonna come in close. I was trying to practice keeping it a little bit bulkier. Um, that's something that I have to practice every once in a while because I just tend to spin really thin. And it is 342 yards. I'm pretty sure it's 8 ounces. So again, I don't know what I'm doing with it. Sometimes I just spin to spin, but I think some little girl in the world is going to get hats, a hat and mittens out of this and be really happy. So... Okay, three more hanks of yarn. Let's do the last paradise one first. I know you guys are wanting to hear about this and I am doing a separate video on this, so it will be shown one more time, but this is the bio nylon that we got in the paradise box for May. I know what month it is. So I did spin this pretty much right away this is the, I think it's called Grassroots. And I, like I said, I was trying to hurry. You can see more what it's gonna look like right here. See that? I really wanted to get it on my wheel. So I did spin it pretty much right away, right off the end, because I was looking at the colors in that, they're a lot similar. And I really wanted them to blend and just create all different kinds of shades of green. So I spun it right off the end, which makes it blend a lot. And then I chain plied it. I don't know how many yards are here, but I can figure it out if I go ahead and count the wraps because I have a two yard um, nitty knotty. And it does not, this is a good one, thing for everybody to know, which I think most people will already realize but it has no stretch or it has no bounce back which I think we would all expect but I mean like it really has none I'm not sure what to do with this but I do love it I absolutely love the color and there's a little shine to it so it's really really nice I think the shines probably mostly from the rose fiber that was included I'll talk about it when we um, spin it, but I thought some of you guys probably won't watch that video, but you might want to see the finished yarn, so. It's not like anything else. Let's put it that way. It's just unique. And so, I don't know, when I do that video, we'll talk about it. It's not too far off. Again, now, like I said, sometimes I practice skills that I lose if I don't practice them. So I had some Rambouillet that I had dyed in the colorway Love Story. Love Story? Yeah, love story. 
Early on when I first opened my shop, the very first dyed top that I put in was Love Story. And it was the very first thing purchased. And I had said to John, like, I don't know if I want to sell that. It's so good. Hence the name Love Story. And he was like, just do it again. So I've been doing it again. And I have two spins on two different fibers. Same colorway. And I thought that would be fun to show. So this one is a Rambouillet. And I was working on a bulkier thick and thin. I definitely got there. It's a really, really fun one. Um, a lot of color, a lot of barber pole, which isn't always my favorite, but I thought if I wove with this, I would like it. And then the exact same colorway. This is just BFL and it's also love story. So this one is spun <laughs> quite a bit finer. It's also on BFL, so it's reflecting a lot more light and um, a little bit shiny and it is chain plied. So much spinning, right? Over the last couple months, it's been nutsy. Now, oh wait, I have one more thing to show you and then we'll do sock madness. You probably already saw it, but I did a, I made a bath mat that is going to end up in our guest bathroom. The accent towels in there are lime green and white. I made this bath mat. This is the side that looks like it should look. <laughs> and then this is the end where I had tried a different texture and I was gonna put it on both ends and then I forgot. I really like this texture. It is gonna go under the little lantern. One of you guys suggested it and was so smart. We have this big lantern on the floor in the corner and this is gonna go under the lantern, this different texture, because it's a little flatter, so it works out perfectly. I was gonna fix it by sewing like a new hem, and I don't have to now. I actually do really like it now. I did not like it at first. I didn't like how the loops looked in the color changes, but it has grown on me as I just like walk past it. Now I really like it, so who knows? But I am still hunting for yarn to do one of these for our bathroom. And I know some of you guys have said that I have to have some anti-slip on the back. Well, first of all, that floor is not slippery at all. Um, it's not slick. It's like a matte finish. So things will move, but they're not like slippy. And you can do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And you can actually buy this, these little underlay kind of rubbery mesh things that you just put under and it grips the top and the bottom. In our bathroom, we do have a slippy floor and it doesn't have anything on the back. The back looks almost identical to this. It's woven a little bit more tightly just because they did it on a machine, but it looks almost identical to this and it has nothing on the back and we never slip on it. So I'm not going to do anything, but by all means, if you wanna make one of these and you think you want to do that, do it because it's always better safe than sorry. I haven't been able to find any in the same, um, the cones, you know, the big sugar and cream or peaches and cream cones. I'm still trying to find a color I like. I have decided what color I'm gonna paint that bathroom though. That's the thing about when you can make your own things and you can make them perfect, then you really stop being okay with settling for what you can find in stores or in you know on websites or whatever and um i'm not okay with it i want it to be perfect sock madness let's get into it i mentioned a few videos back that i'm kind of having trouble with sock madness i haven't had any trouble with the patterns yet i'm having trouble staying engaged i mean you never can make everybody happy that's just the nature of running it something like this and I totally get it. I'm trying to stay engaged, but I'm struggling. So far, getting done and moving on hasn't been a problem. I showed you guys the qualifier sock. I gave that to our new daughter-in-law. Um, one of our sons got married in January. The party to celebrate is the end of this month. I actually thought she would like them, but I wasn't 100% sure. This is her first hand-knitted item from me, and I was like, if you don't like them, feel free to pass them to someone who will, because 
That's all I care about. I just don't want them to get thrown in the trash and I know someone will want them. So the first pair of socks is called Evil Choices. It's because it is, it's all pearled. I mean, it looks all pearled, but you could knit them inside out as well. I don't mind pearling because I knit Continental, so I just pearled mine. And they're big, really big, because I have big feet. I wear like a nine and a half, and these are still kind of big for me, but they turned out so, so, so pretty are pretty much all pearled and then they have this really pretty cable detail up it's like a tree that ends in a heart there's some more branches on the tree and um i'll show you the other side too this is the first pair of course i meant to and i think i'm gonna give them to a lady in that knits with me at our shop because i think they'll fit her better than me these are going to a wonderful friend who will love them so that was the first pair. I did not knit the bonus pattern after them because it just wasn't my style. And then the second pair is this pair and they are called All the Bees. They're lace and there are a million beads on here. Let's see if we can get in here. I used um, Ba Yarns and I ran out and I was so stressed out. I was like, how did I run out? They're enormous. So I was stressed out. I was like, I have literally never run out of sock yarn on a pair of socks before. So that seemed really strange to me, but then more and more people were finishing and saying that they ran out of yarn and I was like, okay, I feel better. So, cause I had as much yarn as they said to have too. Look at these, they cover this whole blocker. I could easily just like carry the blocker in them like a bag. I'm gonna go right down and then this is the toe they come right down to a point and then I'm just twisting it so you can see better and then go down into the toe so this cast on has a bead like every other stitch and they are so pretty and sparkly the bonus socks for that round were these they're called but I had this rainbow yarn, I dyed it like over a year and a half ago, and I thought the herringbone stitch would be the perfect thing to make socks with this so it doesn't pool. I'm gonna see if I can get these on here. I don't know if I can or not, because the herringbone's not that stretchy. Oh yeah, no problem. So, and then I took some just black out of my stash to do the, the heels and the toes and all that, because I thought it would really pop. I liked this once I got the hang of it. Um, I mean, not it's not hard. This is the side where you go back and forth. You keep you change direction, and then this is the outside. So these turned out beautiful. They're going to a friend also, who gets socks every year on her birthday, and she watches. Oh well, maybe she'll forget. You never know. These were the next pair of socks in Sock Madness. All right, so these are very hard to get a good picture of. These are called Belief in Yourself. They have a crazy long leg again, which isn't for me, but some people love. And there's brioche here. There is color work back here. Let me turn this so you can see this, because it is. The, I think this is the prettiest part. Look how pretty that is going up the back of your foot. And this heel is so cool. Look at that. Isn't that heel beautiful? So it's pretty. You can't see it as well as you can see on the inside. And they ha actually had me turn them inside out so they could make sure that I really did what I was supposed to do, which is totally fine. Also, you guys, this color combo, I've got to do this again. I actually bought, went and bought this yarn, this blue and green and purple. It's um, Indonesia Malabrigo yarns, but in colorway Indonesia. And I went and bought more of it because I love it so much. And I paired it with Knit Pick Stroll Tweed. Cannot remember the colorway. I don't think they make it anymore anyways. It is just so beautiful. It's a little bit, maybe the tweed is a little much for the pattern, but I would love to knit color work with this combo again because the combination of the two is so pretty. Those were something. 
I've knit brioche before, but it's been a lot of years and I don't really love it, so I don't knit it a lot. So last, last socks, last knitting. Um, this is the last pattern uh, that we just finished. I moved on to round five. It's called Little Etudes. It's intarsia, but it's a kind of a different kind of intarsia. You just carry your yarn up in almost a straight line. So the thing about these is intarsia is not my favorite, uh, it, but I can do it. I mean, obviously I can do it. I did it, but I used bobbins and that wasn't your best bet. They tell you in the instructions to do those little butterflies. A lot of us have seen people knit intarsia with a little yarn butterflies. That worked much better. I put them on two zip ties the little butterflies in a ring just like they were being knit to keep them from getting de getting tangled up and also they couldn't fall off because some people were putting them on a long needle or a skewer and that made me stress that they were going to fall off the ends so the zip ties were closed the whole time and i just pulled off the butterflies and that worked pretty well i'm not keeping these either they barely go on my foot i think they'd be better on someone with like maybe two sizes smaller and i don't want to weave the ends in so whoever gets them will have to be a knitter and weave their own ends in i guess if you have about a size eight foot and you want them message me because i'm not keeping them <laughs> And if they're gone, they're gone, but I would definitely consider sending them to you. Last pair of socks so far. Wish me luck, we're down to 20 people. I, it would be cool to be the one that moves on to the finals. I don't really think that's gonna happen, but it would be cool. I don't know if I mentioned this or not. During lockdown, I bought a embroidery sewing machine. I've been using it a lot and it's kind of making me want to sew, which is weird, but I digitized my logo and put it on a patch. It's kind of hard to see, I know, but isn't that cute? I'm gonna put this on a little bag, I think, or maybe on my spinning wheel carrying bag, I don't know. I made this patch, so if you guys have a machine, you already are gonna understand this just from looking at it, but I, these stitches are too dense and it's making it like, first of all, hard as a rock, but also kind of like pull in and make it a big dent. But isn't it cute? I think I fixed that issue now, but on this one, it was a kind of a mistake. And then I sample stitched out, and some of you guys know you've already bought these bags for me. I sample stitched out this design of the sheep with the little yarn balls. Um, and now I'm putting it on Notions bags. I've been messing with that machine quite a bit and having a lot of fun. Um, if you have a cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette, I have had those for quite a few years and I um, I taught myself to digitize designs for those and, and make and edit designs for those in a program years ago. Then you can use the same program to make designs for the embroidery machine with an extension that makes them into embroidery files. So I've just been having the best time with that right now. Next Tuesday will be the last breed study from the main study. We're gonna continue on though once a month for a while. And then uh, next weekend, I'm gonna do a, Q, a spinning Q and A. Pick something out to spin, spin along with me. I love that. I can't do it live because we will be um, at the wedding party, the celebration for our son. So I won't be able to do it live. That's gonna kind of take up most of the weekend, but I will see you guys there. If you have questions, hurry up and get them in. I'm still collecting them. And just, I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.